Ladies and gentlemen, would you please be upstanding for the Queensland Police Service Flag Party. piece of music, fireworks. Dear friends, we come here today to farewell a husband, a father, a son, a brother, uncle, mate and colleague, and a brave police officer, Detective Senior Constable Damien Leading. I will leave acknowledgements of individuals to the Commissioner for later on in the service, but on behalf Damien's wife, Sonia, and their children, Hudson and Grace, and his parents, Julian, and Stephen. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your support for being here today, because it really means so much. And on behalf of the extended family as well, I would like to say thank you. 
Today, friends, we've got a hard task before us. We are here as a result of an evil act. We are here full of grief, maybe some anger, numbness, probably all of the above. The solemnity of a full police funeral is an outward show of the honour and respect we have for Damien as a police officer who paid the highest price. The eulogies in the service pay tribute to Damien, the husband, father, son and mate. In them we get a glimpse of Damo the man. We're here to pray, to celebrate his life and to mourn our loss. In preparing for this service, Sonia gave me some very simple instructions. She said, Damo would have wanted a simple and light ceremony. Well, I think simple is a little bit beyond us at this point. <laughs> Sorry. And as for light, we might have to settle for a mixture of laughter and tears. And that's good and that is appropriate for an occasion like this. I would now like to introduce Mark and Warwick to come up to deliver the first of the eulogies today. Good morning, Sonia, Hudson, Grace, Julie and Stephen, Margaret and Gary, the extended family and ladies and gentlemen. Sonia, on behalf of the Coomera District Detectives, the Coomera Police District, my wife Vesna and my family and I, I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak today and the opportunity for all of us to celebrate Damien's life with a full police funeral. I would like to tell you about the Damien I know. The Damien I know is not the triathlete. The Damien I know is not the carpenter. The Damien I know is the hard-working detective named we know as Damo. It was about five years ago when a young red-headed bloke first started relieving in the CIB property team. He was a hard worker who had a distinct dislike for anyone dealing in drugs. Damo immediately showed the qualities that would become his trademark. He was honest, hard-working and loyal to his teammates above any anything else. Damo quickly became everyone's mate. He was the sort of bloke you wanted to be around, you wanted to work with and you wanted to become friends with. We recruited Damo into the Gold Coast CIB where he started permanently in the Coomera CIB team. Damo became part of the furniture from the day he started. Damo had a passion. It was to rid the streets of drug dealers. I've never met anyone more ruthless in pursuing these dealers than Damo. It was a daily occurrence to see Damo leading the drug dealer into the watch house. His passion was born out of a desire to make the community safer for his children and everyone's children to grow up in. With such a high work rate, you will always spend a lot of time in court. I, for, I will forever picture Damo returning from court, throwing his brown suit jacket over his desk, leaning back in his chair with his hands behind his head proclaiming, another one bites the dust. He was so proud to be keeping the dealers off the streets. In 2009, Damo was one of the original founding members of the Coomer District Detective's Office. <laughs> from that day, Damo took on the role as a senior investigator within our junior team. 
Despite being asked to do so much with so little, he never complained. He just got on with it, doing what Damo did best, blocking up the crooks. He was meticulous with briefs, compassionate with victims, and tenacious day in, day out. Damo was a quintessential detective, although he would very much hate that term. The general public may not have known much about Damo, but the local crook sure did. Damo was Cooma District's first plainclothes officer of the year. It was an award judged by his peers that he was uncomfortable with. He didn't seek recognition or seek the spotlight. Damo was the ultimate quiet achiever. I will always remember Damo receiving this award at the Christmas party. Damo was only a social drinker, but he spent the rest of the day, evening and the next morning drinking from his new trophy. The last man standing, he kept reminding us. At the start of every shift, Damo would come into my office and explain to me in great detail why his Broncos were better than my team. This would often become a five or six way conversation with, with others in the office as we all support different teams. Damo would sit in my office and we would talk about our families. We would talk about the silly things our kids have done recently and we would talk about our future plans. As a Blues supporter, I was particularly impressed over the past five years with what I would call Damo's Maroon Tribal Dance. I would get about 20 minutes of it after each of Queensland's State of Origin victories, and we all know there's been a few. Damo loved a good practical joke. He used to take a rubber snake out on searches and hide it in places where you knew you were going, you were, you were going to look next. He would laugh for the rest of the day when he saw you jump back three foot. Damo was also widely known in the office as the email bandit. If you would leave your email open, he would send an email to as many people as he could with the message, call me urgently. <laughs> Again, he would laugh all day as your mobile phone went berserk. <laughs> Excuse me. Last Sunday night at around 9 p.m., I called Damo before I went to bed. I wanted him to remind, remind him that Manly had flogged the Broncos. He made excuses, we shared a joke, and we both had a good laugh. We only spoke for a couple of minutes. Had I known this would be the last time I'd ever speak to Damo, I would have had so much more to say. I would have told him to be safe, to look after himself, and to, be not, not, and to not be so brave. There are so many things I would have told him. I know that if Damo could talk to me now, he would say, yeah, 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 Proc, what's this fuss all about? Damo would then ask if his partner and everyone else was okay. Damo would also want to know if the crooks had been caught. The last thing Damo would have said to me, he, said, he would have said, promise he would take care of Sonia and the kids. And he probably would have thrown a go Broncos in there somewhere. Damo, I promise to you, mate, that we, your police family, will always look after Sonia, Hudson and Grace. Oh, Damo, your memory will always live on. We will honour you by staying strong and keeping the community safe for your family. Last Sunday night, our lives changed forever. Last Sunday night, our world stopped.
Damien, Damo, Ranga, Fanta Pants. <laughs> These are just a few of the names our mate was affectionately known as around our office. To many that met Damo, they thought he was a quiet, shy, reserved type of guy. Once you got to know Damo, you realised that he was a mischievous pest who loved a practical joke. Damo, Damo and I spent many hours comparing stories about his Hudson and my Alice, what the kids had done and where they were at. When Damo spoke about his kids, there was always a certain glow about him. You could tell when Damo spoke about his kids how proud he was of them. Damo loved his work, but work was a very far distant second to Sonia, Hudson and Grace. We were with Sonia last week when we were looking at one of the thousands of tributes that have been paid to Damo. A lady had left a laminated card which contained a poem which Sonia read. After reading the poem, Son said, this is Damo. This, epitomise, this epitomises who Damo was, how Damo lived his life and the qualities that he strived for. Sonia asked that I share this poem with you today. Go, go placidly amid the noise and the haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even to the dull and ignorant. They too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the, the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Be under wholesome discipline. Be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be, and whatever your labours and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful, strive to be happy. A hero is described as a man of distinct courage and ability who is admired for his brave deeds and noble qualities. Damo, you are our hero. And I know how much you would have hated all this attention, but you are a hero to all the nation. Most importantly, mate, we will ensure that Hudson and Grace will grow up to know what a hero their data was. Damo, you can now rest in peace, my mate, with the knowledge that we will take care of Sonia, Hudson and Grace. We will miss you. I will miss you, mate. Now I'd like to invite Tracy and Tim to come up and say a few words.
Last time I was privileged enough to speak on Sonia and Damien's behalf was at their wedding. None of us have ever thought the next time that I would speak on their behalf would be at his funeral, at Damo's funeral. I recall the time that I met Damo when he started flatting with Sonia at their Broad Beach apartment. It wasn't very long before Sonia told me that she had started to date Damo. I recall my response to her being something like, oh bugger, now who am I going to get to perv on at the gym? <laughs> Damo had such a way with words. Sonia mentioned that when Damo asked her out, he said to her something like, I like your cat. Sorry, I got that wrong. I like you and your cat likes me, so how about it? <laughs> Obviously, Sonia couldn't resist such eloquence. <laughs> as well as Damo having a way with words, he was also quite the romantic. I remember a camping trip that we went to at Broom's Head and Damo and Sonia had to cut it short. Damo told everyone there that he, they had to leave early because they had court the following day. <clears throat> so off they went, unbeknownst to us all. Next morning he got her up nice and early, made sure she had something warm and took a hot air balloon in and that's where he proposed. And like I said at their wedding, nice work Damo, what was she gonna do, bail out? Damo was very accommodating to Sonia and us girls. He always suffered to a degree as a result of our girly get-togethers, I'm sure. He was our drinks boy and our taxi if we ever needed one. Damo comment commented several times that coming home to our girly get-togethers was like having a uh, house full of teenage girls. <laughs> Other than that, he never complained and in fact, I think he actually enjoyed all the gossip that he learnt about. However, this kind of carry-on was not one-sided, as there were many times where Damo was the one that needed a lift home after a night's out with the boys, which often only meant about three beers for Damo. On occasions, his big nights out resulted in him sleeping outside on the deck, because for some reason, he couldn't find his way back into the house. <laughs> Damo's carpentry, carpentry skills were something that many of us admired, he was always building something or renovating around either his and Son's house or other people's houses. I always loved visiting their place because I always had, knew that I had a new addition to admire. He was quite the handyman and he would often surprise Sonia with his renovations. One recently spoken of by a mutual friend was at Sonia and Damo's old house. He built platform type steps from the top of their, from their house down to the roadway. So it's a bit of a long platform, a short step, platform step, platform step kind of thing. The only problem was that some of those steps were this high, some of those steps were this high. So unless you were really paying attention, chances were you might actually take a tumble. But in Damo's defence, I personally believe that the people that were stumbling down them were stumbling down them because of something in their water rather than Damo's handiwork. <clears throat> One of Damo's most recent renovation surprises that Sonia informed me about was their retaining wall at their new house, made of large rocks. Sonia, being the supportive wife that she always is, replied, oh, that's great, hun, but how are we going to pay for that? Damo was a great carpenter, but it was when he joined the police service he found his true calling as an exceptional police officer. Damo's life as a police officer began in 2003. This career choice wasn't just a job for Damo. It was his career and something that he was very passionate about. As all police officers do, Damo began his career in general duties and then progressed to the criminal investigation branch. <clears throat> and contrary to popular belief, he didn't just spend his time drinking coffee and shuffling paper. Or so he told us anyway. <clears throat> there was something else in Damo's life that he felt very passionate about, and that was his love for his beautiful wife, Sonia, his son, Hudson, and his baby daughter, Grace. They were by far his proudest, proudest accomplishments in life. <clears throat> 
Damo was a fan of the simplest things. He loved nothing more than sitting back with a corona watching the footy whilst just kicking back with his kids and wife and family. I know at this point Damo would want me to say, go the Broncos. Hudson is Damo's mini-me. He would follow his data around the yard, helping him wherever he could. Then when little Grace was born, Damo's life got even better all over again. From the day she was born, he cherished every moment he had with her, which included lots of cuddles, every man's favourite changing nappies and bath time. He'd only recently commented on his attempts to feed her breakfast. It would appear that little Grace was a little bit stubborn and would not let Damo feed her. I wonder where that stubbornness could have come from. I could talk for hours about Damo's antics, but I think you get the general idea that Damo was not only a great police officer, he was great at everything he did. Most importantly, he was a wonderful husband, father, son, brother, uncle and mate. It is with a heavy heart that I find myself before you in these circumstances. With Damo's passing, it has highlighted to me the importance of strong family values and mateship. These past days have truly shown the two sides of human nature. But with the compassion that the general public has displayed during this horrific time, it has rekindled my faith in people. <coughs> the support and generosity given to and shown towards Damien, Sonia, his children and family is very much appreciated and felt with a warm heart. Damo's legacy will live on through his wife Sonia, son Hudson, daughter Grace, and the fond memories of his colleagues, friends, and family. Good morning, Sonia. My family and training friends send their condolences. I know Damien, the, um, the triathlete, Born 17 January 1976, Essex in the United Kingdom, son to Julie and Steve, brother to sisters Haley and Chantal. He arrived in Australia at age eight, attending Burley Head State School, Palm Beach, Corumban High. He had a love of sport, all of them I think, particularly soccer, baseball and triathlon. Whilst attending school, Damien was employed, appropriately, Red Rooster, In 1994, Damien commenced his carpentry apprenticeship at Tambourine Mountain. Damien also worked at John Flynn Hospital, reaching the position of operating department assistant. Then Damien's desire to become a police officer was known. Initially unsuccessful in applying for various police forces, including Queensland, Damien undertook study to gain his Diploma of, of Justice in 2002. Being determined and resilient, Damien continued in his quest to become a police officer. He applied to join the West Australian Police. He was accepted but declined, feeling that Queensland was now ready for him to join. My earliest memories of Damien I was meeting this skinny redhead when I turned up to training at Bond University Pool in the winter of 1997. It was soon clear that this guy was going to give it his all, that he was determined to be as fast as he could be. We joined forces, trained hard, each pushing the other, knowing that come race time, it would pay off. It was not uncommon for Damien to leave his best performances on the training ground and suffer during the race having not backed off, always wanting to go faster. I can clearly see now that Damien's involvement with the Queensland Police Force has reversed this trend. As if to emphasise this, he became a loving husband to Sonia and a devoted father to young Hudson and little Grace. Earlier this year, Damien thought I was crazy when I told him I was doing a run across the Sahara in Morocco. But even out in the sand dunes, during the event, lessons learnt in those long hours of training together got me home and over the line. I'll miss his smile, his easygoing ways, 
but I know whatever challenge I choose next, Damien's spirit of determination will push me along. He was my friend, he was my mate. I'll miss him. Let us pray. Lord, as we mourn the death of our brother Damien, show us the immense power of your goodness and strengthen our belief that Damien has entered into your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd now like to read a passage from the first letter I'd now like to read a passage from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians Be ambitious for the higher gifts and I am going to show you a way that is better than any of them If I have all the eloquence of men or of angels but speak without love I'm simply a gong booming or a cymbal clashing If I have the gift of prophecy understanding all the mysteries there are and knowing everything and if i have faith in all its fullness to move mountains but without love then i'm nothing at all if i give away that all that i possess piece by piece and if i even let them take my body to burn it but am without love it will do me no good whatever Love does not delight in evil but rejoices in the truth it always protects always trusts always hopes always perseveres love does not come to an end the word of the lord thanks be to god dear friends I have a reputation for not preaching about fluff. If I'm going to get up and say something, I like to know it has got some substance to it. After all, I'm a police chaplain. Now, a police officer asked me last week as I was preparing for this service, what on earth was I going to talk about at Damo's funeral? Well, I answered him. I said, "Well, I'd like to talk about something positive." And he said, well, "What could you possibly talk about at that funeral that would be positive?" And I said, "Well, I'm going to talk on love." And you should have seen the look on his face. His eyes opened, his jaw dropped. He says, "Padre, that's a bit touchy feely for coppers, isn't it?" it possibly is but i think it's so so important this topic for us here today and for the police record i'm not going fluffy because i believe real love is something that is so true that it is essential for us to live truly human lives well the word love seems to be used by most of us in a lot of different ways We say we love our football teams. Some might even say they love the Broncos. Sorry, Damo. A good number of of us here today would probably say they love a good beer on a cold day, or a cold beer on a hot day, or a beer any day. We use love so often. We love ice cream, cats, sunsets, you name it and someone will say they love it. Now the love that St Paul is talking about in that reading is different to all those other types of love. He calls love a higher gift, something above the normal things of life, a higher gift that it's something that should penetrate our whole lives. that everything we do should come from love wow 
St Paul says no matter what we do, how good it seems on the surface, if we do it without love, then we are nothing at all. Well, it seems from that that love is pretty important in God's plan for all of us. But what is it? What is this thing called love? Well, we know it exists, but you can't touch it. There's no little thing in the brain that produces love. It's not something rational. It's not part of the intellect. Love is something spiritual. So it resides in a person's soul. That part of a person that does not die. It has no parts, so it can't be broken up. It lives on forever. Love. Love never ends. Love never ends. We Christians believe that human beings are made in the image and likeness of God. Well, you know, we can see that when we love. When we love, we resemble God more closely. Well, so where is God in the events of the last week and a half? Well, St John in his first letter says, anyone who fails to love can never have known God because God is love. So if you want to see where God is working in this world, you look for love and then you'll find him. So how can you identify this real love, this higher type of love? Well, first of all, you've got to see, does it reach out of a person? Is it selfless? Does it want the best for another person? That's real love. Love is proven also by a willingness to sacrifice. That's real love. Love feels the pain of loss of the beloved. That's real love. I think in the events of the last week and a half, we've seen a lot of real love. The ancient Greek philosophers sort of thought about it and divided love into all different types. And I'd like to go through some of those and, and let you see how I believe God is working through love in those different areas. First one, brotherly love, philos, the love of our common humanity, the love of compassion and empathy for another person even though we mightn't even know them. It's that love that helps you help a little old lady across the road or that gives to poor people in Africa. The common love of humanity. Well, Damien's tragic passing, I believe, has brought this out in our community again. Just look at the tributes, the flowers, flowers piling up on police cars. Can you believe that? But it's happening. People going out of their way that are touched to go into a police station to offer condolences. It's something going out. They're making some a willingness to sacrifice. They're making little sacrifices. Sometimes it's donations of money. I've seen a few little letters written by children. Some effort. And you can tell that the public feels the pain of the loss of Damien. So there's real love. And gee, that's something to be really, really grateful for. On Wednesday morning, I, I got to the Gold Coast Hospital about 7 o'clock. And I got out and I was walking into the hospital and this beautiful nurse rushed up to me and threw her arms around me. She was in tears and she gave me this big hug. I was a bit sleepy before then, but I woke up after that. And she said, I'm so sorry for what is happening. I'm so sorry for Damien, complete stranger. That, dear friends, is true love. There's also family love. The true love of a family brought together by bonds that are so strong. 
what happens though in the midst of, of, of a tragedy? Family can get stronger, can come together and in the last week I've been privileged to see that. I've seen a family hurt grievously and in the midst of their tears and their anguish rally around to help each other and to come closer through that. That is love. That is self-sacrificing love when you're hurting to still have compassion for others. There is that love. And to see family around Damien, surrounding him with love, that was something truly beautiful. Another type of love is friendship love. The blokey way of saying that is mates. We've also seen that. Damo's mates. We saw Damo's mates at the hospital staying there. Staying there often for quite a long time. They didn't want to leave. And no one was game enough to try and make them even. Let me tell you that. But they stayed there in vigil. And they were hurting. But again, they came together to look after each other in their hurt. That is real love. It is real love. And even though we go through pain now, Damo's mates will be stronger for their friendship love. I'd like to add another type of love. We hear often talked about the police family. Well, the family's got to have love. So I'll call this one police family love. I might have to copyright this because this is one of mine. When a person becomes a police officer, it's generally because they want to make a difference, to uphold the law, to protect the community, or just to lock up crooks. These motives all can be summed up simply by saying that they want to do some good for others, good for the community. But when a police officer takes their oath or affirmation and holsters a weapon, they are aware, at least in the back of their minds, that they might have to back up those fine motives with sacrifice. Long hours, pressures on family relationships, physical, mental injuries, and in Damo's case, with your life. It's real love, isn't it? But I look at the police here today, members of Damo's police family, you can tell and you can see and you can feel that they are experiencing the pain of loss. That's real love. And the highest form of love is called agape, total self-sacrificing love. On the front of the order of service, there's a beautiful quote. A quote from Jesus Christ, from the Gospel of John. And it says, Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friends. Jesus did it. He gave his life for us out of love because he loved us. Why? so that he could rise again to show us that death is not the end. It is but the beginning. It is a beginning. And he promises that if you can love to the extent of giving your life, he will give you a reward for that love. And Damien has done that. So, dear friends, our faith can help us now. Our faith can help us in knowing that God will bring Damien to himself, that he will look after Damien, that he will reward Damien. And then what about us? Well, we need to continue on our pilgrim way 
And I pray that the love that has surrounded Damien's death may continue in our lives to make the world a better place, a safer place, a more peaceful place. Dear friends, life is changed, not ended at death. Friends, Damien was a bit of a pilgrim on this earth. Out of love, God created him. Out of love, God sustained him. God gave Damien to us to be a blessing in our lives by the love he showed for others. Now he has been called home to rest in God's love. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love does not come to an end. With hope in Jesus' promise of eternal life, we lift our hearts to God, that God will receive our praise and thanksgiving for the life of Damien. Lord, hear us. Let the family and friends of Damien seek comfort and consolation. Let us pray that God will heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. Lord, hear us. That all assembled here in faith may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. That God may welcome to glory our family and friends who have departed this life. Lord, hear us. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd now ask our Commissioner, Bob Atkinson, and Assistant Commissioner Paul Wilson to come forward for the straightener of service and valedictory. Sonia, Hudson, Grace, Damien's, Damien's parents, Julie and Stephen, his sisters, Chantelle and Haley, Sonia's parents, Gary and Margaret O'Brien, their extended family and friends. Sonia, we thank you for enabling this service today to be a police funeral with full honours. The Queensland Police Service has lost an outstanding officer, a colleague and a friend to many. Damien's family have sustained that loss also, but as well, a husband, father, son, brother, and much more. Although we try, words are barely, if at all, adequate to express the extent of that loss. The Queensland Police Service is greatly appreciative of the outpouring of support for Damien's family and his colleagues from all areas of the community. We acknowledge the tributes the messages, flowers, donations, and the many thousands of people who have and are wearing blue ribbons as a tribute to Damien. And we acknowledge the media for their recognition of Damien and the work his colleagues undertake in that regard. We acknowledge the memorial services being held today for Damien at Thursday Island, Cairns, Townsville, Mount Isa, Mackay, Rockhampton, Longreach, Gladstone, Toowoomba, Roma and Cunnamulla. That support far and wide is enhanced by the presence of all of you here today. And in that regard, I'd like to acknowledge the Governor of Queensland, Her Excellency, 
Ms. Penelope Wensley, AC, and Mr. Stuart McCosker. The Premier of Queensland, the Honourable Anna Bly. The Minister for Police, Corrective Services and Emergency Services, the Honourable Neil Roberts. And the former Police Minister, the Honourable Judy Spence. Representing the LNP and State Opposition, Mr. Campbell Newnham, Mr. Jeff Seney, and Mr. John Paul Langbrook. The Mayor of the Gold Coast, Councillor Ron Clark, and the Lady Mayoress, Mrs. Clark, and all federal, state, and local government political representatives. Thank you for being here. I also acknowledge all members of the Senior Executive of the Queensland Police Service and, and our deputies who are here today, Ross Barnett, Paul Brown, and Acting Deputy Commissioner Andy Henderson. He and Stewart is overseas and cannot be here. And of course, the local Assistant Commissioner for the South East Region, Assistant Commissioner Paul Wilson. I acknowledge commissioned officers and all members of the Queensland Police Service, our volunteer supporters and retired and former members. I acknowledge the commissioners and their senior officer representatives from all Australian police jurisdictions who are here today, as well as the Australian jurisdictions. We have representatives from New Zealand, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I acknowledge our police chaplains, and in particular today our two officiating chaplains, Chaplains Columba, Macbeth Green and Graham Ramsden. We have many colleagues and supporters. I acknowledge the Director General and Commissioners and our colleagues in the Department of Community Safety, Ambulance, Fire, Corrective Services, Emergency Management Queensland and the State Emergency Service. And again, the Australian Defence Force is represented here today by a number of people, but primarily by Major General Mick Slater. I acknowledge the presidents of the Queensland Police Union of Employees, Ian Levers, and the Queensland Police Commission Officers Union, Tony Cross, and the police union officials from throughout Australia and New Zealand who are here today. And Ian, we also acknowledge the work and support of the police union for Damien's family. The Chair of the Crime and Misconduct Commission, members of the Judiciary, those representing government departments and organisations, and particularly for us today, the management and staff of the Gold Coast Hospital at Southport, members of the community. Again, we thank you for your presence here today. This part of the service is the reading of the Statement of Service, the valedictories. Paul Wilson and I are going to share that role today. Paul will now share with you some thoughts and words of his own and we'll read the statement of service, and then I'll make some concluding comments. We will then present the statement of service to Sonia, and soon after that, Paul will read the police ode. Sonia Hudson Grace, Damien's parents, Julie and Stephen, his sisters, Chantel and Haley. Sonia's parents, Gary and Margaret O'Brien, extended family and friends, again my St Gear condolences, from the entire police family of the South Eastern Police Region. Ladies and gentlemen, on this very sad occasion, Sonia has asked me and requested that I personally have the privilege to read Damien's statement of service. Before I do so, I will at Sonia's request acknowledge and publicly thank my staff, the Queensland Ambulance Service paramedics, the Gold Coast Hospital medical staff for their courageous work and medical treatment provided to Damien and the subsequent support to Sonia and Damien's family. Ladies and gentlemen, on Sunday evening, the 29th of May 2011, at about 10.30 p.m., one of the most serious crimes on the statute was being committed at the Pacific Pines Tavern. Detective Senior Constable Damien Leading and his partner, Detective Senior Constable Nicole Jackson, led the policing response in the initial attempt at apprehension of offenders and as we now know, this exceptional detective was fatally wounded. 
Nicole, you continue to bravely perform your duty at great risk to yourself, calling for assistance and providing first aid to Damien in this very dangerous situation. On behalf of Sonia, family and the community, thank you. Moments later, Coomera, District Duty Officer, Senior Sergeant Brett McGibbon arrived and immediately took control of the fresh pursuit of the offenders and personally provided first aid to Damien. And in the words of the Queensland Ambulance Service paramedics, they assisted Brett in providing first aid to Damien. Paramedics Jane Andrews, Andrew McClellan and later Clint Peter, on behalf of Sonia, family, community, we thank you for what you all did for our Damien. Ladies and gentlemen, almost immediately three police crews arrived, two general duty crews and one dog squad. Constable Kelly Gant and Constable Melly Godfrey from Narang Station, without thought for their own safety, knowing what had happened to Damien, they pursued and detained a person who is now before the court a very short distance away. Ladies, well done and thank you. Sergeant Gregory Dawes and first year constable Viet Voshag from Coombra Police Station also simultaneously arrived with police dog handler, senior constable Wayne Algy and his police dog, Boson. Again, without thought to their own safety, Senior Constable Algy and First Year Constable Boss Hag and Police Dog Boson pursued the armed person into the adjacent bushland where that person was detained, a weapon recluttered. Gentlemen and Boson, well done and thank you. Boson will march today with other police dogs. Sergeant Dawes took command of this part of the pursuit and the seven hostages in the tavern were assisted and reigned safe. Ladies and gentlemen, while this was unfolding, other police officers on the Gold Coast and Coomera hear it and physically respond. But my excellent staff at the Police Communication Centre at Broadbeach have to sit and listen on the police radio. They took the triple O call from one of the hostages, dispatched the responding police and waited for sit rips. And their worst fears unfolded when they heard Nicole call code one on the police assistance radio. To Sergeant Alex Hindle, the Comco in charge, police radio operator, administrative officer, Kerry Hindle, call takers, AOs, Tony Helling and Kim Knott and all other night shift staff there, thank you for the excellent job you did and continue to do daily in all the, one of the busiest police communication centres in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, most of the staff are civilians and have never worked as police officers on the street, but they are an integral part of our policing family. To the wonderful and caring staff at the Gold Coast Hospital in the accident emergency and the intensive care unit you are purely incredible. Sonia, family, the entire police family and community, thank you for what you did to Damien. A very special thank you from Tonya, Sonia, family, to our wonderful police chaplain, Condor Macbeth, and to our senior human services officer, Belinda Collins, who assisted me greatly at the hospital. To the scenes of crime police, led by Acting Inspector Leon Wart, you're also truly incredible. Thank you for what you did and you do daily in the South East. But ladies and gentlemen, when one of our own are involved, when police are investigating matters, they continue to provide that professional scientific response. 
The team comprises of police technicians, scientists, fingerprint and ballistics experts. To Leon and your crew, thank you. The investigation of this crime was initially led by Detective Senior Sergeant Mark Proctor, the officer in charge of the Coomera CIB and CPIU, and Damien's colleagues. But as they understand, an independent team was immediately brought in under the control of Detective Acton Superintendent Tim Tresice to Mark, Tim and Acting Chief Superintendent Dave Hutchison and all the South East Regional Detectives and our colleagues from the Homicide Squad, State Crime Operations Command, a very sincere thank you from Sonia, the family, for the investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we are your police and we investigate all crime. When one of our staff become victims whilst investing that crime, you see the current public community support. Thank you. We know we always have that support. To all the South East Regional Police and their families, particularly Inspector Steve Flory, the District Officer from Coomera, his Inspectors Gary Pettiford, Stephen Pine, Senior Sergeant Andrew Goldbolt, and the Officer in Charge of Runaway B Police, where Sonia is attached, Senior Sergeant Murray Underwood. The family, the entire police family and the community, thank you for your professional leadership and support during this very tying period. Especially to you, Steve and Mark, the district officer and the officer in charge, I personally congratulate you and thank you for your leadership and support to Sonia and her family and to your staff. Superintendent Paul Zebarth, the District Officer Gold Coast and his team for preparing today's fine tribute to Damien, the management and staff of the Gold Coast Convention Centre, the Gold Coast City Council and all other persons that have assisted here today. A very special thank you on behalf of Sonia, Hudson and Grace to the community for their support, their generous donations to the Damien Leading Family Appeal. Thank you all. Also to Mr Ian Lever, the General President of the Queensland Police Union of Employees and all the members for their ongoing support of the police family. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege now to the statement of service for Detective Senior Constable Damien Leading, registered number 16187, born Essex, England, the 17th of January, 1976. He commenced his 8.4 years of dedicated and loyal policing to the Queensland, at the Queensland Police Academy on the 13th of January 2003 and being inducted as a constable after graduation on the 30th of July 2003. Performed his first initial training in the Gold Place Police District, easily the busiest and the demand, most demanding police district in Queensland if not Australia. As far as an introduction to a policing career, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't come any tougher or any better. The next three years, from July 2004 to August 2007, Damien performed duty at the Surface Paradise Police Station, one of the toughest beats in Queensland and Australia. On the 18th of August 2007, Damien fulfilled his next policing dream of becoming a detective and commenced as a plainclothes constable at the Gold Coast Criminal Investigation Branch, again at Surface Paradise as part of the Coomera allocated team. Again, the busiest and probably the most scrutinised in recent history of detectives in this state. But they are, like all, very hard working. As spoken by Mark, his officer in charge, Damien was a first class apprentice detective at Surface Paradise for the next two years. Until the 7th of November 2009, when he became a founding member of the new Coomera District's criminal investigation branch and performed exceptional duties and leadership until his tragic death on the 1st of June 2011 after being fatally shot in the execution's duty 
while attending to armed hold-up in progress with hostages at the Pacific Tines Tavern at 10.30pm on Sunday the 29th of May 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, plain clothes, constables, use Damien leading had performed three years in nine months. His detective appointment application was being processed as this tragedy unfolded by his superiors and my recommendation. The Queensland Police Service Detective Appointment Board has approved his appointment effective as of the 30th of May 2011. A well-deserved and fine achievement by an exceptional officer. Ladies and gentlemen, the exceptional calibre of this officer is further evident by the fact that he received this detective's appointment at three years and nine months. The current average for plainclothes constables to receive this most prestigious award is usually in excess of five years. At the same time, me and Sonia, having two children, taking parental leave, building mates' pergolas, cubby houses for all his mates, becoming and continuing to be a superb, fit triathlete, always a topping the arrest rate, worked very hard. Simply exceptional, ladies and gentlemen, the ultimate modern-day detective. As a result, Detective Senior Constable Leading's bravery is being posthumously awarded the Queensland Police Service Valour Award and the Queensland Police Service Medal for Diligent and Ethical Service. These two awards, along with his detective appointment, will be presented to Sonia and family at a future ceremony. Damo, you are a first class police officer. You've developed quickly into a first class detective, son. I'm personally very proud of what you did and achieved for the Gold Coast community, a place that you loved, grew up in, worked and lived with Sonia, Hudson and Grace. I'm very sorry for what has happened to you, but you have my personal guarantee that Sonia, Hudson and Grace will be looked after in the traditional way by the police family. Son, God bless. Thank you. May you rest in peace. I will now hand back to the Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Paul. We've heard uh, some beautiful words today and um, we're going to hear more later that um, when uh, our Chaplain Columba was talking about why people choose to join the police service, I found that particularly interesting because as part of preparing for today I read through Dramian's file and in the very early stages of his career as he was starting out as a recruit one of his assignments was to write an essay on that very topic of why he wanted to be a police officer and this is an extract from what he wrote. I believe I can make a difference in the community by upholding laws. In the first five years I would like to work the full general side, gaining as much experience as possible. I would then like to look into a specific area. And later in that passage, that work, he indicated that the place that he wanted to serve, if he could, was the southeastern region. And of course, he achieved all that and more and faster than he had predicted. He was an outstanding police officer with a bright future that has been stolen from him. In providing for the safety and security of the people of Queensland, police officers unavoidably put their own safety and security at risk. Ten days ago, Damien confronted the dangers associated with that risk with unhesitating commitment and courage. As Paul has told you, Damien has been posthumously awarded the Queensland Police Service Valor Medal. That's the highest award we can give to any of our members. The criteria for the Valor Award is this. An officer who performs an act of exceptional bravery in hazardous circumstances. Now, Damien clearly demonstrated that criteria on the night of Sunday the 29th of May. His Valor Medal will be presented later to Sonia. But if Damien was still with us, 
those present, when he received it, would have warmly applauded him. And there is no reason why we should not do so today. So can I ask you? Thank you. Thank you. And we acknowledge not just the Valor Award, but the life, the career, and the character and courage of Detective Senior Constable Damien Leedy. And as others have today, I'd like to conclude my words by saying something to Damien himself. Damien, today we pay tribute to you. We acknowledge and thank you for your work, your loyalty, your dedication, your commitment, your friendship and support for others your courage and the example of professionalism that you have set. We say farewell and we wish you Godspeed. You serve with honour and we were greatly honoured that you chose to serve with us. I'd invite you all to be upstanding. As we gather together all our thoughts and memories of Damien and longing for the coming of God's kingdom, where we will meet him again, let us offer our prayer to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Would you please remain standing for the oath? As the sun surely sets, Dawn will rise, it arise, for the service above self demands its own prize. You have fought the good fight's life, race has begun. Run in peace, your reward for eternity begun. And we that are left shall never forget. Rest in peace, friend and colleague, for the sun has now set.
we will remember him. We will all remember him, hasten the dawn. With honour he served, with honour he served. Please be seated. I'd now like to invite Chantel Leading and Gary O'Brien to come up to say a few words and if other, any other members of the family would like to come up with them, you're more than welcome. As kids, we lived together. We fought, we laughed, we cried. We did not always show the love inside that we had. We shared our dreams and plans and some secrets too. All the memories we share, it was, it's what bonds me to you. We grew to find we have a love that is very strong today. It's a love shared by our family that will never fade away. You are my brother, not by choice, but by the nature of our birth, we cannot have chosen a better one. You are the best. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Chantel, Damo's little sister. I'd just like to share a few words with you. Damien teased me every day of my childhood and inspired every day of my adulthood. He was the one I would turn to for advice. He was my hero, my guardian angel. I looked up to Damien as a father figure. He became, over the past few years, someone that I could confide in, someone that I could tell everything to. He would not judge me, only make jokes to make the situation lighter. As you know, Damien never did a half job on something whether that be painting a wall, making a friend's deck, or making the kids' new swing set. He always made it the way he wanted it and put all his energy into getting it right. He did everything out of love. My brother, the practical joker, was always trying to play a prank on someone, whether it be a physical practical joke or telling me something that he knew would just stir me right up. He was a type of person that could make any situation better. Damien is in a good place now. I know that he is watching over all his family and friends and will be guiding us through life. At this moment, it is hard to imagine our lives without Damo in them. Our strength this last week has come from each other as a family. It has also come from the amazing support we have received from the Gold Coast community and the assistance we have received from the Queensland Police Service. On behalf of Damo's family, we are overwhelmed and very grateful. We are thankful for all the special moments that my brother has left us. And with that, I know my brother will continue to live on within our hearts and minds. G'day, everybody. Um... Historically, I never write a speech. What comes out of my mouth, even though uh, I might have to ask for a few pardons from my friend here today, um, comes straight from my heart. So instead of actually having a speech, I just thought I'd just come along and have a bit of a chat with Damo. Um, we often did that. At the moment, where you're lying, Damo, mate, you, you can't see where you are. Um, I've got absolutely no idea how the hell you pulled this one off, buddy. Um, normally, when you've been here, uh, would have been to crusty demons, um, maybe monster trucks. And I did hear a rumour that you did go to a Kylie Minogue concert once, but uh, I don't believe that. So, mate, there's people I'm looking at at the moment. Mate, you've got a massive family here. People that I don't know, um, people I do know who are very, very close to us. Um, there's some people here that I've seen on television um, organising flood stuff that's just been through um, the Premier. I don't think she's even pulled a crowd like this in Parliament, mate, um, so you're doing pretty good. <laughs> anyway, Damo, uh, quite a few years ago, mate, um, we were living on Phillip Island and uh, 
Sonia, our precious little girl, was turning a few corners in her lives, um, and she ended up being your flatmate. And Margaret had come up for a bit of a bit of a break, and come back and said, "Oh, you know, Damien is this, this guy. He's got bright red hair." And uh, and she said, I, I just think there's a bit more going on than just flatmates. And as most fathers do, you go, uh-huh. <laughs> then when I heard the comment before about uh, he actually loved that cat, that cat was the most vicious damn thing I'd ever come across. How could you love it? <laughs> you know, Damo, we've had some great moments, mate, but uh, eventually you, uh, you asked to join our family. Um, a hell of a decision for me to make. Never had a ranger in my, my team before. <laughs> But uh, with our family's background in New Zealand, there's a, uh, a Māori term called whānau, which means family. It's a very tight-knit group. Um, we look after each other. Uh, we allow you to get into this little group, mate, and um, I'm having a bit of trouble letting you go at the moment. Things we've often spoke about, as I've always mentioned, um, it's one hell of a way to get out of building a barley hut, mate. But when it finally gets done, you'll be proud of what's going up there. Um, I got quite shocked the other day after all this started to happen and Sonia informed me that you've got a plan on the computer to build a coffee table and a cabinet. You've got to be shitting me, mate. <laughs> I think uh, I might encourage Sonia to go out and actually buy one. Um, the last few days, you've put us through hell and high water. I know when Sonia joined the academy that Margaret and I have said in the past, you know, that um, yeah, one day it's going to happen to somebody. It's happening out there, but we never expected it to happen to you, mate. Um, I actually thought I was going to get you into a Titans jumper, but that never quite happened. But the last few days in hospital, I guess it's been a good time of reflection for me. Um, but mate, all the suffering you were going through, um, please believe, mate, that we did the right decision. You're in a better place now. And uh, I guess this is farewell at the moment. I know I'm going to join you at some stage. Um, when I do eventually get up there, I'll be knocking on the doors looking for the most manicured garden up there. Um, if I'm going to borrow that damn trailer, mate, I'm sick of coming and getting it when it's full of rubbish and a half flat tyre. <laughs> so, buddy, until then, you've made us proud. You've made all of our family proud. You've made Queensland proud. You've made Australia proud. You've done what you say that's just a job, mate. This isn't a job. Um, you've created a life for other people, and we thank you with our hearts. Before I go, it's already been said about uh, the police service. Um, I have been absolutely overwhelmed. Um, our family has been overwhelmed with uh, the support organising this today. Um, I tried to pay a lot of attention with Paul. Thank you, Paul. Um, of trying to keep it our personal see you later for demo. I think it's I think we've, we've managed to achieve that. Um, the hospital staff, as a paramedic, as most people know, we always hear about ramping and we hear about the bad things of hospitals. But the hospital staff at Gold Coast Hospital, you guys are absolute beauts. Um, a very very personal thanks to the officers who went out there, um, who are my colleagues. Now I've always told Damien that. Damien that um, there's no better paramedic in Queensland than me, so without sort of uh, letting you guys flags down um, with what you had, with what you had to deal with, you guys did a fantastic job. I couldn't have done any better. The big fella upstairs couldn't have done any better. So uh, thank you one and all, everybody, and um, that's all I can say. No. <laughs> Damien's dad, Steve, has asked me to read this poem on his behalf. My biggest fear. My biggest fear was to lose my son. Now I've lost him, my fear has gone. There's nothing left for me to fear. I've lost the one I held so dear. The worst is over, the horror is past. The thing I feared most has happened at last. No more do I worry, no more do I care. Nothing can hurt.
when a heart isn't there. I've been through hell and survived somehow. Nothing else can touch me now. There's nothing to fear of life to come. I lost it when I lost my son. We now come to the part of the service where we say our ritual farewell to Damien. I will, we will read those prayers while Chaplain Ramsden will bless Damien's casket with holy water. And I'd invite you to be upstanding now for those prayers. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Damien. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, Come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest, grant unto Damien, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Damien in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Damien forever. Amen. Please be seated now. Please stand and let us now take our brother Damien to his place of rest.